Hello. Yo, what it is, man? It's your boy Bank on Boxing, man. Uh, it's quarantine, so everybody looking very rough. I'm gonna try to hold this steady. But uh, some topics I probably want to touch on. First and foremost, is gonna be uh, Devin Haney's comments about not losing to a white boy and how people blew that out out of, you know, proportion, uh, people want to try to, you know, be fake outraged, talking about it was racist, and this, that, and the third, but nah, man, white boy, I, I told somebody in the group that the term white boy has never been racist, it's, it's never been a time, I'll put it like this, watch this, you can say white boy, and they won't bleep it out on TV, okay, now, you can drop the M bomb and it will get bleeped out because you're not supposed to say it or you'll get fined. White boy is never a term that we use that show that white people will lack, you know, or inferior to us. It's just a term. It's just, it's just white boy. It's, it's slang. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You could be hooping or something and say, you know, the white boy is like they hooping or whatever. The only reason why people get upset about it is because the perception of that, uh, the perception of white champions um, is not as many, but you know, lately it's more. So yeah, man, it's, he just meant it. It kind of be like Bernard Hopkins. It's funny though, because Bernard said that and he got beat by a white boy. Uh, but nah, man, cut out a fake outrage. That is not a racial slur. It's just a figure of speech. It's just slang. Uh, somebody tried to bring up black boy. I mean, I would. If you said, oh. You know, I can't lose to a black boy or this or that or whatever. Who's going to get mad? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, show me. That's the motto. Show me. Show me what you're going to do to me and this and that. Let my hands and feet be the talking in that ring. That's pretty much what I'm going to say on that. So just stop the outrage. Just stop it. it it's, not, it's, it's not worth anything. Um, Something else I saw. So. Uh, somebody asked on Twitter. It's funny because uh, you didn't see guys actually like my reply. They were saying um, a fight between Ugas versus Keith Thurman who wins. And I come in and Ugas don't throw enough to beat uh, Keith Thurman. And it's true. He don't throw enough punches. Um, I think that would be an easy fight for Keith Thurman, especially if he on his bicycle. Because we know Keith Thurman can fight all 12 rounds and move if he want to. Well, when he in shape. I put it like that. It makes sense why in Pacquiao fight, he didn't move as much. He had to drop too much weight in, uh, in between Jose Tito Lopez and Pacquiao. And that's why he wasn't as mobile. But either way it goes. Um, Ugas didn't have no really clear defining victory over no Sean Porter. He um, throw probably about the same amount of... I think his combinations don't go more than three punches. You know? And um, he got the same flaw that Luis Ortiz got. Um, I haven't watched Laura in a minute, but Laura probably had the same flaw. It's pretty much that same Clu uh, Cuban style flaw where they got very good defense. They pick their shots, but they all mostly the same speed and they never switch it up or throw more than X amount of punches. And that's how they get caught. So that's the reason why Luis Ortiz got caught by Wilder because of the way he fight. Wilder's just buying his time. He didn't switch up uh, Ortiz and switch up the power or the speed on his punches. Everything's the same. Um, and also, Ugas don't have that much power. So, with Ugas not having that much power, Keith possibly may try to walk him down. And I know you're going to say, what? Like, Keith walked Manny down a lot. Um, and if Keith actually uses a jab, if Keith uses a jab, it might be a wrap for Ugas. I don't, I forgot. I think he lost to Amir Amon. I think that was at 140. I'm talking about Udenis Ugas, for y'all that don't know. But I don't know if it was like a knockout or whatever. I actually got to do some more research on Ugas to see like how many times he's been like knocked down or whatnot. But I, I can see Keith actually hurting Ugas. Now I really can't see Ugas hurting Keith unless he get him. He sneak in one to the body. Um, that's Keith's kryptonite. Uh, we know he trains, but it's just body's breaking down. 
your mind willing and your body not able. And that's the kind of stuff we see happening with Keith one time Thurman. You know what I'm saying? I got an old and I ain't afraid to let it go. If you can beat me, beat me. That's his mantra, and he lost. I mean, it is what it is. And just, you know, to piggyback more on Keith Thurman, uh, recently he's been talking, you know, coronavirus. Um, he's been talking real greasy about uh, fighting Bud, talking about sitting the contract. Hey, man, listen. I'm going to look down while I'm at the stoplight. One time, then got a contract. Well, a fight offers to fight over there on ESPN, fight Bud and them and that. He turned it down for Pacquiao fight. Who could blame him? I think Bud tweeted back, said, man, if I sent you the contract, you'd find a way to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? So Bud know what's real. Do I think Keith will fight Bud? I think at this point, yeah, because, I mean, I, don't, I think he know he might not get the EJ fight. Um, He said he cared about legacy. So the only way I could see him care about legacy is if he decided to fight Bud. Um, I think he can get the money, the right type of money for the fight. Now, it's not going to be what he got against Pacquiao because all that was back-end money. But he could probably negotiate – Seven in between seven to ten million dollars, and I can't say if that's included in back end or what. I think the fight will sell. Keith got a mouthpiece that is gonna have to push the fight. But the thing is, would he actually fight Bud? Because I mean, at this point, you've had the WBC, you've had the Super WBA. Now, get that WBO strap, IBF. I don't know if he's even in the IBF rankings, but granted, that stuff don't matter. I know at any chance, you know, he could make that call to fight, call Al and fight Errol, but will he fight him? But I actually would love to see the old Keith Thurman fight, fight Bud. Um, I got to see how he's looking after the surgery. I think he's able to hit now. Um, some tune-up fights for him. Adrian Granados, um, not the Mike Dallas. It got to be somebody who, like, not that good, but it ain't just no walk, walk in the park. Not almost on Jose Cito Lopez level because Jose Cito Lopez got Robert Garcia, and we see how that did for Keith Thurman. I got to think of some more welterweights, man. Um, at the 147 uh, level, that's not, you know, not like that. Uh, Ain't Lippinets? I think Lippinets is at 147, but I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say Lippinets is a tune-up fight. Lippinets can crack. Shoot, low key, he coming off a loss. Um, nah, that might be too much because he's been active already this year. But I would have said Jesse Vargas, but I don't really see Jesse Vargas as a tune-up. I don't know. It, it just depends, man. I didn't. I didn't got an all off subject. <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about Keith Thurman fighting Bud, but Bo Mac always said that Keith Thurman would be Bud's hardest fight. And if you know anything about boxing, you'd have to agree. It's not about you know me hating Arrow or this or that. It's just styles make fights. Keith Thurman, all his biggest knock is probably. He don't jab, he can get hit to the body, and he don't throw a lot of straight punches. So, them is three biggest knock, uh, knocks. But the way he fight is so awkward that it's hard to prepare for. Um, you go back and watch. Watch that first round with him and Danny Garcia. That, you know what I'm saying, that's not the same Keith that was in there in the first round versus Manny. I thought I was going to get that Keith. Man, they was... They were swinging for the fences, and he caught Danny. He caught Danny with some shots, bro. And and, and the way Keith punch, they come hard and fast. They pause, but the way he punch, it's hard to avoid them things, man. So that would be interesting if uh, Bud gonna decide to slug it out with old Keith Thurman, or he gonna box him. But I, I definitely would love to see that fight. I uh, would like to see Keith Thurman and uh, Bo Mack go against each other with their banter. Because that's all it's going to be, you know. Bud going to tell you to focus on your fight before you're not making it to your fight. But 
Yeah, man. It's been your boy Banco Boxing. Um, tune in some more. I'm, I'm trying to drop some more heat, man. I'm gonna work on like some highlight videos and like press conferences and crap real, real soon. Just been busy and trying to get everything taken care of uh, at home. But hey, you made it this far in the video. Please share it on your social media. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell icon. It's your boy Banco Boxing. I'm out.